going on guys, welcome to episode 15 of the Feel for Football podcast, I am your host Sanchez Bailey and it just feels like I've just done a podcast already, like the week's gone so fast, you know, so we've had an international break, football's happened and we've got the return of the Premier League here and now and so following from last week, um, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, hopefully it was very informative and insightful for you and I did want to kind of continue it and almost build episodes up as a bit of a journey and so you know we've kind of worked on the element of concentration and improving your focus and being a bit more aware of that excuse me and then we spoke about how last week how um you can use visualization to kind of prepare yourself mentally and and bring yourself to that point where you can prepare yourself for competition um but then having me mention that i feel like it was only right to do an episode on preparing yourself for competition you know, so we're talking pre-performance routines um, and the whole idea of it, where it comes from, when and where you should apply it and how you should apply it. That's the aim of this episode, for you to have a bit more of an idea of how you can then apply it. Now, it's a very interesting thing. So um, sports psychology is so broad in the sense where you've got team sports, you've got individual sports and the whole uh, procedure of pre-performance routines comes from what you would call self-paced skills. And what does that mean? Self-paced skills are things that are almost done on your time. Now, as footballers, there's not many things that are done on your time. So there's one, there's maybe four instances where you have things that are done at your own pace and time. One being saving a penalty kick. Um, it's an incident that's controlled by you. You move and you control the way that you go to try and stop the, pen, um, the ball from uh, going in. From the attacker's perspective, is you taking a penalty and walking to take one. Free kick, corners. It does anymore. Forgive me. But I think those are pretty much, and I guess a kickoff, but those are the only safe self-paced elements. So um, in terms of pre-performance routines for that, um, they are very effective um, usually in those instances. And um, uh, in other sports, you will think maybe someone doing a golfing tee, uh, uh, that's what you call it, a putt, sorry, in golf. Um you have uh, a free throw in basketball, you know, and it will have, it will be maybe a serve in tennis. So those are very strong instances or maybe some Olympic uh, particular track and field exercises or sports, should I say. And so that's where the pre-performance routines are very important, you know, in terms of you centralizing yourself physically and mentally and preparing yourself and relaxing yourself. And that allowing your, that allows your body to, to kind of prepare itself for, its optimum form of performance and so how would that be done in most cases breathing is going to be very important we're talking about focusing our eyes on either the target or maybe a particular um, other aspect which could uh, distract you from the whole maybe the surroundings being the fans and then there's an element of self-talk where either you could say some stuff verbally or you could literally be saying things in your head which is either going to be focusing you back onto the task or even being some motivational forms of um, reinforcement. And so those elements there are how you can really develop yourself in a pre-performance routine um, from a self-paced skill. My focus today, though, is more about you preparing yourself for a match. Now, in my time speaking to so many athletes and so many athletes are going to be listening to this, There are different, if you was to all, if I was to, if this was a seminar and I was like going to ask you each individually to tell me how you prepare for a game, it's going to be very different. There's not one way of doing that. You know, there's so many different aspects. You know, I'll quote a few that I know of. I know some players that don't like to think about football at all before a match and I'm talking about right before a game. Um, Some people like to distract themselves from other things and not really think about it. Some people think about the game all throughout the weekend, right up into the match, can't even sleep um, completely. So there's different ways that people handle the game and handle their pre-match preparation. But I want to kind of leave you with a few things that must be there. And then it's almost working for you to figure out the best way that has that it works for yourself. Now, the first thing I want to really ask you guys is to identify one of your top performances. Now, if you've been following the podcast, you may have done that already. So I remember on the returning um, handling quarantine episode, I asked you to identify your season highlight. 
that might not be your most uh, revered performance in your career. But think about one of those games where you played your best, you know, when everything was working for you, you was in complete flow, performance levels was great, either statistic wise or even just internally, or maybe in, even externally where there might have been fans praising you or the situation was very um, supportive of your efforts on the pitch. Identify that. And then what I would like you to do, this is something that I do with some clients as well, is cast your mind maybe even as maybe as far as a week um, prior to the game or a few days prior to the game. As much as you can recall some of the, the moments that led up to that fixture, I want you to kind of bring your mind back to that. And the reason why I'm asking you to do that is because in some ways, if you felt like you was at the optimum flow and you was play, playing literally um, with so much comfort and everything was going your way, there may be some some instances and this is where I'm able to help and kind of identify some of those things where there may be some subconscious or unconscious um, contributions to you being at that perfect state of, of a football match. And so, you know, th- some of the key things you might want to recall is how training went and how you was um, taking training. Um, another thing was maybe how you're taking the off the field, um, how you're handling off the field uh, moments in your career and maybe also how you're thinking about your performance are you thinking about your performance prior to the match are you almost envisioning yourself performing are you setting yourself some targets in your head are you then distracting yourself are you taking your mind off things are you going to meet family are you taking your dog for a walk what were the things that you were doing leading up to the fixture where you played awesome identify some of those key factors and An easy way for you to do that is for you to kind of think um, or break them down into categories. What was you doing socially? Was you seeing friends? Was you kind of keeping yourself to yourself? Were there people that you um, were in contact with that were maybe supportive in terms of dialogue? Was you sharing your experiences with someone? Was you, whatever, whatever you was doing or can you identify what you was doing? Then you want a physical point. Now, how was you conditioning yourself? How was you feeling physically? Um, maybe you might have felt like you had a bit of a knock and then you responded in a particular way. Um, was you sleeping? That's another good thing. How was you sleeping um, physically? Uh, what was you doing on... We can divide that into another category. So that, that's a physical aspect. So we've got the social aspect and then we've got the physical aspect. The third one is performance. How was you performing? You know, what was you doing in training? How was you approaching training? You know, did you approach training with intentions or was you going with the flow? And then lastly, the mentality. What was going through your mind? Uh, what was your mindset going from training session to training session or even maybe from the last fixture? Maybe you had a moment where things went well in the last fixture or didn't go so well. And then there was some sort of motivation that galvanized you for the upcoming fixture. So if you're if you're able to break them down into categories and start identifying some of the things that you've done those weeks, then we can start unpacking and finding some elements that you might want to uh, create as a routine for you. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I respect that you may not want to think about the game completely before a match day, and if that's you, that's okay. But even if you are or not, one thing that needs to be done is mental preparation for the match day fixture. And what is that? What is mental preparation for a match day fixture? That is essentially you identifying who you are playing, you know, you identifying maybe their style of play and you must you building a case of the opposition. And then by doing that, you're you're almost preparing yourself for who you're like, up against. If you're preparing yourself for who you're up against, there isn't anything that's going to be a surprise to you. And then it's more about you then acknowledging your opponent, not dismissing it, but letting that go now, but focusing more about what you want to bring to the game. What are you going to bring to your team? You are in a team sport, so I was going to say unfortunately, but unfortunately, you have to consider your contribution to the team, your role in the team. And that's something actually that I've broken down in um, in the mindset plan. And then you also, everybody has aspirations and season goals. What do you want to do in that game that's going to contribute to maybe your season target or maybe a performance target you know sometimes you might want to make sure you get a number of crosses in the game maybe you might want to um, handle a few shots or maybe come out from a corner and catch a few of the balls like 
you know, you might have a target. So maybe set that self, set yourself rather a target for you to achieve in the game. Now, once you've identified what you want to bring to the team, your role in the team and what you want to do from an individual perspective, you want to start envisioning that. You want to start casting your mind to the opposition and imagining and visualizing how they would play, their style of play, their qualities, but use also in your role and your team, you're envisioning yourself negating some of those um, those qualities and you displaying your qualities and you utilizing your ability to complement to the team goals, which also then I'm hoping in turn allows you to showcase your individual uh, targets as well. Start envisioning that. So if you want to be that person where you're making passes and key passes and maybe assists, you're envisioning yourself making those key passes against that opposition, against maybe a high pressing team, against maybe a team that maybe passes the, parks the bus a little bit. So you're envisioning yourself in the context of the team and maybe even the stadium. And that allows you to prepare yourself mentally, which will then in turn lead to you improving your, uh, your focus and concentration like we spoke last week, but then mentally prepares you for the game. Now, when should you do that depends on yourself. It has to be a self-awareness um, tool and an exercise that you do where you think about the time, um, think about what works best for you. You, know, you identify whether you're that person that likes to prepare yourself and think about the match and get yourself in that spirit right before the day before, or whether you're someone that might need to do that maybe two days before, or maybe you do it on the day of. You need to identify what type of person you are. And what can easily help is you identifying what you did on one of the, the days where you was a star and things went completely well for you. And then you can start putting in uh, when you can have your mental preparation, which is needed, and then your style of approach to a football match. Now, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and again, like, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, hmm. Here. <laughs> Um, this is one. Of, this is my mindset planner. Uh, I've got a day every week and for 30 days where you kind of break this down into the opponent, um, wave, or even if you have training that day, writing down your goal. You know, once you open it, you've got a, a match day prep where you highlight the opponent, your role in the team, match day goal, and then you've got a reflection as well. And so, you know, this is why the mindset planner is a great application because you know you can start applying this on a daily basis and start creating a bit of a habit that works for you so if you almost feel like you haven't really got that habit quite yet and you haven't got it nailed down in terms of the way that you would like to approach yourself from a mental perspective in terms of reflections match day prep try this mindset planner and this can be almost a taster into the life that almost every athlete should be applying you know, and um, if not, the, the podcast is at least good enough for you to take in info and start applying it. But if you feel like you want something tangible, we can write down. I really recommend that is something that you um, add into your your um, lifestyle. So I don't know if I mentioned it before. It's a bit short and sweet this episode. Um, I do want to say thank you, though, to everybody that's listening and um, checking out the podcast and everything of the sort, really. I really appreciate it. Um, last week, I accidentally had to check something which made me see the numbers, and I don't usually check the numbers, and I won't check the numbers, um, but I saw them, and I was quite impressed with how many people are checking in and listening to the podcast, so thank you. Um, one thing I would ask that would be nice to know that you guys are listening, so you know, maybe share some of your experiences, maybe some of the things that have helped you in the podcast, let me know. It'd be good to know. It's good to know that my words are not just... Uh, in this room, the four corners, and um, tell a friend. If it's adding value to you, tell a friend. And um, I think, how many? Are, I've got a handful left of the mindset plan. So if you do want that, let me know. I do think I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to another book. So once these are off the, the shelves, it's done. Moving on to the next. Anyway, all the best, guys. Do stay in touch. Check me on Instagram. I'm sure you already have me on there. But uh, message me as well. I want to know how you guys are getting on. That's also going to be a part of my um, fulfillment in doing the podcast is hearing the stories and hearing how it's going well. If you've got your hands on a mindset planner, let me know how it's going. Um, it's gone international this week. And yes, all the best and on to next week.